Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got something completely different, not necessarily new. Okay, we've got AK's Interactive's new range of kits. Now, this does seem to be the latest sort of bandwagon. Spoken about it recently, uh, that kit manufacturers are jumping on the sort of, you know, the thing of getting in um, third parties involved with their products. So what I mean by that is we've seen recently Tacom with MIG, okay, so all of a sudden every, all the colour callouts and everything are always done in MIG. We've seen AK obviously have moved somewhat in with Eddard with this particular case and so forth and so on. And I must admit it's something I'm not exactly happy about. Um, it's from a modelling point of view, I think there's a lot of things that are going to be uh, issues I can see coming down the line, shall we say but that is literally for another show. So actually what we've got here is AK's first two releases. We've got the Spitfire, this is the Mark 9C, the late version in foreign surface. Uh, so that's obviously what you're gonna get is all the markings uh, for all the aircraft that were sort of, you know, abroad. And then also what we got down here is the uh, BF109 uh, AK and all the rest of it. Now, as you can see from the packaging, it looks like it's their own kit. There's not actually a mention around here that it's not their own kit on the actual box. Okay, as we look around it just down on here, as far as I know, I have had a quick look on the outside, but I haven't looked totally on the inside of this particular kit. Okay, so this is actually what we've got here. So if we open it up and have a, a bit of a look in the inside, straight away, we can see something that looks quite familiar to anybody who has ever built this kit way around because it just so happens to have this one here. Now we've reviewed this kit and we do like it. It is a very nice kit. Um, but if we look on the inside, bearing in mind we have a clue right here, when you see their one and this one, we can see it is a Rebox, okay? So this is Eddard's absolutely fantastic. And we do say it is a good kit. It's the best Spitfire 148 I think that's out there. Okay, is there. All right, so as you can see, we've actually reviewed this kit before. So we're gonna have a skim through it in case you haven't seen it and all the rest of it. But generally, it is a very good kit. But what we're saying is, these aren't AK Interactives. Lovely box art guys and all the rest of it, but it's that classic thing where a, a manufacturer, uh, you know, hasn't got the time, the resources, perhaps even the knowledge to be able to create their own kit. So the easiest way to do it is to go and grab it. Now, Eddard are guilty of this as the next one, but they do make their own kits. They do a superb line of MiG-21s, okay? And they do a superb line of Spitfires. Their 109s, they had a few issues with, but I think they fixed those now, and they again, do fantastic kits all the way through. And they do numerous ones of their own, but they do do a lot of reboxes, which we have seen. So don't think I'm just having a stab at them because it's a rebox and all the rest of it. It's just that at least Eddard stick their hands up, and it's sort of, it's not our kit, it is another one in, and we're adding all our goodies to it. So, in the box, we have one bag with it all shoved in together, okay? We've got some instructions. And we have got some decals. Okay, so having a look at the instructions, we got a very nice, I must say, uh, little booklet here. If I just undo this just a little bit, as we can see. Now, as you can see, we've got various things you don't use, which is pretty standard. Eddard, when they did this particular kit, they had other things in mind, other versions, variants, things like that. So that's why you got a lot of this blued out, which means don't use it. Okay, we have got some harnesses we can see down here, very small piece of photo etch and all the rest of it. As you would expect, the color callouts are all in AK, but it has got the names for them down there as well. So the crossover is quite easy. It's nothing too bad, all right? So what we have got though is some very nice instructions, as we'd expect. In fact, if we just have a quick look here, I don't know if they are exactly the same as the Eddard ones. I'm just trying to see if they are, which in fact they are. We can actually see the instructions as we see them go down here are exactly the same as we would find with Eddard. So they haven't even done their own instructions. These are just Eddard instructions being put in, but obviously Eddard one, you got a few extra bits and pieces if I remember rightly in there. Okay, so anyway, working our way through, as we've seen before, it is nice. You do get a full internal cockpit with this one. Some very nice details all the way through. Okay, and it is just a thing of watching out for the little things all around here. It's just the little things like these guys down in here that add all the detail down into it. So, usual thing, fuselage sections, cockpit goes in the middle, sandwiching the lot together. We've got the forward bulkhead as well. Very important to make sure that's in and lined up correctly, and it means it will fit like a dream. The wheel wells are quite deep. 
multi-part to build those up as well. And then obviously we've got the ones at the back and then it's coming in. Now this particular one, the shame with it is it doesn't come with an engine. Okay, it would be really nice to see this one that came out of the box with an engine, but we just get the exhaust stacks for it. Okay, going right the way through, giving the impression of, and the top part, usual things go around the back. The wing tips being clipped on because obviously you've got the clip version as well that's going to come along. I don't know if AK are going to do them all like Eddard do, but if they are, they're around. Radiators, air scoops, things like that going on there. Cooler scoops, I should say. Okay, and then obviously putting those all together. The undercarriage, two-piece wheels, was never a fan of those in the first place. Okay, and then putting it all together onto its stand. Tail wheel being slotted into the little slot at the back. Prop system on rear view mirror okay and it goes in to be honest i haven't actually built this kit it'll be a very nice one i would like to do but at the moment we've got other things but it is really nice kit i've seen loads of people do it and i've only heard people sing its praises for the edar one on this one uh, canopy being fitted on so i assume you can have the door open or closed canopy is closed but i do believe you can have it in the open position if you wanted to as you can see just down here okay so what have we got down here we've got the french um, so this is the sort of, you know, the Free French Air Force right the way through. Some very nice markings, something a little bit different. Okay, and we've got the different wing tips. So this is the clipped wing tip on this one. Okay, versus the normal sort of, you know, uh, teardrop ones on there. All right, we've got this very famous, the US one. Okay, right the way through, which was the Italian one all the way in. So it's nice having the source, you know, the sandstone colors with the blue underneath. Okay. And then we got this one as well, which is actually really took my eye. I uh, really like this one. So actually what we got down here is the Egyptian Air Force Spitfire, but it's a very rare you see this one. And I love the way it's got the blacked out cowlings on the top that go right across the front of it with the green over the gray. So I must admit that is very nice. Well, sort of the aluminium finish. Again, it's that thing I'm thinking now, nice bit of AK on there, look absolutely lovely. All right. And then obviously you've got your stencil data and your call outs. And you know, these guys are just as guilty as everybody else these days. As you can imagine, it's their kit, so they're gonna push their weathering stuff. So we have got down here the engine stuff, the other one, the uh, panel liners. And so I haven't seen this, I haven't pre-done this, but I just so happen to have one of anyway uh, the other one is loose and it's around but i've actually got this set as well so if you're wondering how this stuff works join me in a couple of weeks when we get on with the 109 because i've actually got that set and i've got this one we use this one quite a lot and we did the hind uh panel line weathering set yeah i haven't really used that i must admit if i'm honest all right and then some more about them on the back so as you can see nice little catalog for them okay the decals themselves we are assuming but this is literally just a kick out from Eddard. Okay, so I'm just trying to look which it is. So the seat belts, as you can see down here, the harnesses uh, are Eddard as well. Tiniest bit of photo etch, okay, just down in there. Nothing to get excited about. And then these are Cartograph. Now, we were spoken about these before. Cartograph do the best decals, which I think are on the market at the moment, and these are no exception. These are beautifully done. I can't actually see a single fault anywhere with that at all. That is absolutely stunning. Even the trestle detail um, and things like that down on here, absolutely beautiful. Clean, crisp writing right the way through. And I must admit my eyesight's going a little bit, but I think even S42 and 41 actually makes sense. Okay, so yeah, really, really nice. But these Egyptian markings, I must admit now I've got the bug to do one in the Egyptian markings. Okay, uh, quick tip if you want to get things in the resealing bags again, if you stick one side down like that, it won't stick to your decal or whatever you're putting back in the bag. You can slide it in, peel it off. Okay, as long as you're all back in there, you can put it in just like that. Okay, so the kit itself, as we said, we've done this one before. It's exactly the same packaging as we found with the um, Eddard one. Uh, as you imagine, I assume Eddard just shoved them like that. The only difference is when Eddard do the rebox, usually you get a little bit of paper in there saying who the original manufacturer was from the manufacturer, I hasten to add. It's not Eddard have put it in saying hands up, it's not ours. It's just that when we've done the other ones, let's face it, we've done a few of theirs recently, it says in there like Hasagawa, things like that. So. As I said, this is a little bit of a recap on this one. As you can see, probably, pick a camera, any camera, uh, beautiful recessed detail. The one thing I love about this is the detail on this one. It has probably got the finest kit de detailing I've seen on a 148 scale kit. 
if I can get the camera nicely to drop in, hopefully you catch it in the light. You've got all the riveting detail as well as the panel lines and all the other bits and pieces. And when you see it like this, it's fantastic. Now I know there's a lot of guys who go out and re-rivet and take care of these things and put them all in, but it's the first time I've seen a kit with this level of detail. And obviously this surpasses anything from Tamiya purely because I think this is so in scale. It seems to be the right type of feel to it. Uh, when you look at it, it just looks right, okay? Don't worry too much as well. I know a lot of people say, oh, lovely fine detail, I'll lose it in painting. If you keep your painting quite light, quite thin, build up the layers, you have no problem with it. So they are fantastic. The fuselage sections themselves, as you can see, again, that riveting detail follows right the way through this particular kit. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely work on that one and on the other side and on all these smaller bits. So you've got the top of the engine cow, everything else like that. Uh, very nice, the bottom part of the engine, the two piece with the, for the sort of sand, I think this is the actual oil cooler down the bottom here and on the top like that. Internal details, to be honest, got some very nice little details just down in there, just to help the cockpit along. Again, this 48, so we're not talking 30 second, we've got sort of 48, 30 second detail in a 48th kit. Again, you can see the quality of the molding as well, even on the inside, it's absolutely lovely. But what I did notice with the other one, I can see it in here as well, you've got the tooling lines actually in the milling marks, but they are so smooth and beautiful. It's actually like a little bit of work of art in there. Okay, separate bag for the two sprues. Okay, so these guys are, I'll tell you what, we'll walk around these in quarters, I think would be easier. I'm just being mindful because some of the parts have bent. Okay, so if we're starting up in the, the top corner up here, as you can see, this is the internal detail for the cockpit. As you can see, you've got some very nice work going on down there and everything else like that. Little bulkheads, backs of the seats, we'll have a look around. This is the um, uh, sort of, you know, the oval uh, wingtip instead of having the clipped. And as you can see, it's got all that panel line detail in there. Very nice textures across the tailplane and on the rudder, as you can see. And then working across to the other side, as you can see, we've got the bulkhead right behind the pilot the other side of the instrument panel and then a repeat and then when you work down to these parts as you can see all of these smaller parts very nicely done very nice the gates that actually join them to the part again very small so minimal damage all the way around on these apart from these guys which would be a, are a nightmare to cut out i should think okay so that's those there but generally looking around as you can see on all the parts very nice indeed so, so you've got the door, I presume open and closed position, so you've got the open one over here, closed there. Again, another bulkhead right the way through. And then working our way across, as you can see, we've got the instrument panel. Nothing to shout home about, but we have got quite a nice, we saw it on the decal sheet, we've got the dark one there, which if you put it over the top, lots of um, set and sole, things like that, mold it in, it gives you a very nice panel, or you can just dry brush it up, okay? And then obviously we've got the tail planes and everything else. These are all two-piece. Then on the reverse side, uh, as you can see, exactly the same. No problem with any of these parts. Very nicely done, even on the blind side, as you can see right the way through. Okay, locating tabs look to be nice. We've got no ejector pins, which is a nice touch down here on these. That's very nice, so we don't have to worry about cleaning them up. And even down here on the blind side of the mold, some nice details you see on those ailerons. Fantastic work, very nice. Okay. Then we have, we do the same again, because it makes it quite nice, okay. Exhaust stacks, okay, they are two piece, um, if I remember rightly, no, they're one piece. And they do have the hollowed out ends, I don't know which camera will pick that up, but they are quite nice, because they're all hollowed out and everything else like that. If you can see them, there we go, just about. Okay, so generally working around, beautiful work on all of these, very nice stuff. No problems with any of it, no sort of mismolds molds or flash or anything else. These have always been extremely nice uh, ones to do. The tips of the props, beautifully done, nice and sharp, nice and cleanly molded as well. Okay, down here, these are just the little gloves that go on the front of the wings from the wing root area. Nice, the wheel wells, which don't have any detail on the inside, but then nor does the real thing. Spinner cap, obviously got the little hole in it, you could obviously make that a little bit... Um, you know, sand that out and the various things, because I don't know if it actually has it. Don't know why it's actually got a little dump on the end. I didn't think it had it, but there we go, that one does. Uh, but if you didn't want it, obviously a little bit of filler and do that. These, I absolutely I hate them with a vengeance. Two-piece wheels, they are just nasty, okay. 
doors up and down position uh, on these I presume so you can have them open or closed and generally no problem with all the small parts as you can see right the way through. The cannons themselves, okay, they're not hollowed out on the end, but you do have the tiny little tip. There is a tiny little bit of business on the end of each one that you might want to clean up, okay? But generally, really, really nice. So there we go, that is the Spitfire, okay? So it is a rebox, as we know, of the other one. The other drawback to it is, is that it's actually 10 pounds more expensive than the Edar Profi Pack one. You don't get any more in it, you don't get any less, okay? So depending on perhaps the markings you want to go for, then that could be you know an option for you. But generally, that is the thing with that particular kit, okay? Now, the other one, which we've got down on here, is, let me just move these lightly out of the way and then I'll tidy them up a little bit later, is this guy. Now, this guy over here, if we just swap that over, it'll stand up, that'll be fantastic. If it won't, we're in trouble. Okay, something heavy, something heavy, something heavy. There we go. <clears throat> so, next up we've got this guy. Now, this guy here is... Now, I don't actually have this version here. What I do have here, though, is another Profi Pack one, which is this one. Now, we know this is a different, this is a G6. Obviously, it's a different aircraft. But actually, as we know, there's a lot of common tooling between the two, okay? And to be honest, I'm gonna review that kit as a complete separate a little bit later on. But again, we know by looking at them, this is completely Eddard uh, and all the rest of it, all right? So this particular one is AK148002. Uh, this is 148001, okay? It's their first and second kit. Again, looking around them, we've got the markings, as you can see. Some quite attractive markings down there. Something a little bit different from your standard sort of Luftwaffe colors and everything. Some nice little bits down there inside and then all the way around. Now inside the kit, which as we know is a mirror of the other one. Go stand, you are, that's good. Okay, so again, not tons going down here in the box. Just the same as we found with the others. It seems to be following the same sort of format. So down in here, we have the old instruction book, okay. Usual thing again, it's multi-part, so you've got lots of it you're not gonna use, and we've just spoken about, obviously the colors are all in a case. And again, it's exactly the same as we can find down in here. It's exactly as Eddard do it. So usual thing, construction, putting the parts in, the various bits and pieces, you're gonna work your way through. Instrument panel, obviously you could do it, or you could just uh, put down the actual decal down onto it. It's talking about the seat belts, putting in those photo H seat belts onto it, which is quite a nice touch. And uh, basically finishing off the cockpit. We got the lower uh, one as well, sorry, the upper one, uh, right the way through going in. And with this one, it's slightly different to the Spitfire, you do get the Daimler Bend engine in it, okay? So we do have a nice full engine which can be seen. Some nice details. It's not, you know, like a resin one or anything else like that, but it is quite a nice touch because you can have it all exposed and seen. So fitting that one down into there, the cockpit, rear bulkhead, rear wheel, things like that, all going in. The guns, which are gonna go on the top, okay, for the machine guns over the engine. Okay, and right the way through. And then obviously working on the wheel section, slightly different to what we've seen with the Spitfire. So this little guy has these uh, one piece wheel well sets that drop in and then put in, putting in those leading edge uh, slats down onto it. And then obviously we got things like the uh, coolers going down on there, ailerons and flaps being all put into position again. And then literally straight the way over, goes together really nicely these kits, dropping it all completely down for a one piece fit, putting in the little door, okay, so the actual for the uh, air scoop, which is gonna go underneath the nose. Tailplanes all going in and rudder and all the rest of it, so those can be fitted and I think they're movable as well, so that's quite nice. A Little bit different on this one, rubber tires okay so the thing is it should have hubs and putting those in which is another nice touch putting them in which is a lot better having a one piece okay and then sticking those in gear going on and then just talking about your angles of how they should be set out which is quite a nice touch okay and then we've got all the external parts going on there okay so if you want to have the engine open or closed totally up to you which way you want to do it okay and then obviously spinner canopies 
uh, putting them in okay now if you want the closed up engine just slightly different way of doing it as I said putting those in one piece and then just drop it down on top depending which way you want to do it so as you can see we've got the fantastic Spanish markings which I say something a little bit different it's a different color and everything else like that which is quite a nice touch okay so and we've also got Mickey Mouse running down there with the cross and the spot right the way through and then we've obviously got the uh, duck egg underneath very nice as you can see going in some nice options down here so what do we got we've got uh they're all 1939 markings all the way through but you do have different options something a little bit different as well uh, we've got the actual uh, markings in the middle i'm not sure what they are okay but again it's nice to see we've actually got the spanish markings down here for 1940 okay so a little bit later on we go down there like that then we've got all your stencil data as you can imagine on the back running right the way through again it's quite nice these are nice clean open having the different color makes them nice and easy to work out exactly what the part looks like so instead of just having a number it's actually got showing you what they are which actually will come in very handy on a lot of builds i know okay so that is a nice touch with this one okay down in here we do get something a little bit different so we've got a little booklet which is nice little reference touch just down here and we've got the decals and a bit of photo etch okay so we've got a little booklet history the spanish history and obviously it is oh it's all in english i thought it'd be all in different languages but we're all in english talking about the markings some nice reference photos as we can see down in there right the way through and it's quite nice it's all in english i thought it'd be in a million languages and just little bits so actually that's quite nice nice little touch to give that putting it right the way through diorama idea okay so that's nice again we're assuming these cartograph decals uh beautifully done solid color and again all of this stuff is absolutely lovely very nice very in register gorgeous as i say cartograph you just can't go wrong with those they really are very very nice and same again we got a little bit of photo etch literally it's just the harnesses tiny little bit as you can see nothing to write home about and all the rest of it again it's eddards i assume yes okay so everything's dated 2016 as well on the photo etch so it's obviously new stuff that's been brought out i don't know if it's brought out just specifically for this kit okay so again we were saying these are the Eddard new generation ones. This one is as well. So these are absolutely fantastic. I know in the time when they first came out, they had a massive storm, shall we say, of criticism uh, because the rivet counters were out in force. Uh, I really went to town on them and gave them a hard time over the 109. But I do believe this is a good one and fixed. But not being a rivet counter, looks like a 109 to me. Okay, so again, beautiful detail if we just drop the camera. You can see it right the way through. You catch it in that light, lovely riveting detail, which just helps everything pop out, gives it a fantastic scale look to it and all the rest of it. Quick look on the blind side, as you can see, very nice molding. Again, no ejector pin marks on anywhere on the inside, okay, which is something Eddard have now cracked. Amazingly, other larger companies don't. Now, this particular one, we've actually got two wing sections so obviously this is what we're saying this is a standard kit so why have we got two obviously we have different versions i'm going to play spot the version change there you go so we've got the bulges underneath this one doesn't okay so why would they put it in? This is what I'm saying. It's obviously a standard kit. This is an updated part by Eddard to go into this one. Okay, but as you say, I know the 109 guys out there are screaming at me. There you go. Okay, so fuselage itself, as you can see, beautiful detail. All of that lovely work as well. We've got the bomb rack. We've got the one piece cowl over the top with the machine gun vents in there and everything else like that. We've got some nice details down on the inside, as we can see on both parts. No real sign of ejector pins, flash, and all the rest of it. Got a couple of little ones down in here, but nothing that actually gets in the way. It looks like Eddard have stepped up and they've removed all ejector pins from parts that have it. Because like this little guy down here, as you can see, we've got none in there, none in there, none in there. Absolutely none anywhere, really. We've just got a couple of little ones just down in here just to help the tail out. But again, beautifully done. Okay, so we'll walk around the engine like we did last time. Okay, so... 
Okay, starting up here, as we can see, we've got the floor, the actual area. Again, not much detail down in there, but we are 148. We've got some nice little beading work just around here. Okay, so that's quite nice. The engine, back headrest, things like that. Obviously, different ones we've got. Instrument panels, all the little parts. Again, beautifully done, no problem at all. And then looking around the prop, very nice details just down in here on the center. So we've got the bolting and everything around there. Rudder pedals, nice touch. Uh, the turbocharger or uh, supercharger, is it on these? Very nice. Different types of nose. So this will be the big open one on here, okay, with the cannon in the nose. All right, and then working up here, as you can see, we've actually got the drop tank, two piece, one half of that sort of Daimler Benz engine. All the parts for it, as you can imagine, are just all down in here. And we've got the second half, the seat, again, nicely done. And even on the blind side, unfortunately, we have got a little bit of a sink mark just down in the back of the prop, and it's probably on all of them. Okay, so that's a little bit of a downside. But generally, I'm really nitpicking. Very nice, very sharp. I love the way the gates are very closed on these as well. So that is a nice touch. But that is the thing with the Eddard kits. They are very, very good. Okay, so usual thing we're saying about, we've got the one-piece wheel wells up here okay some nice detail with riveting and everything else like that down here on the control surfaces all right we've got the little uh, bomb down there we've got all the little parts everything else fantastic done the machine guns very nicely done the scoops those leading edge slats on the wing okay then working our way over again flaps tail planes bombs okay gear everything else like that these are the hubs and it isn't it's a one-piece tyre, which is better. Okay, so it's not rubber, it is thingy. Okay, and then all the way through. I must admit, really, really nice. Fantastic little kits. Okay, don't panic about that. That should be there. <laughs> okay, got a tiniest... No, it's not. Shut up, Flory. It's not an ejector pin. But again, very nice. We don't have ejector pins, which is something which has been sort of parent on some manufacturers and I know I've got a bit of flack for saying it but hell look even Eddard can do it now okay the clear parts which I know we didn't look at the Spitfire but we've seen them before these aren't the best in the world you might notice we've got a little bit of crazing down on here in fact that's short of nasty because on the side you might notice if I put my finger in it you can see it it's pretty nasty it's fogged you won't be able to see anything with that closed this side of it isn't too bad at all, okay? So you're okay, apart from if you have it in the open position. And the front is crystal clear, but the sides, again, a fog. No, this side's not so bad. This side isn't brilliant. It's a little bit fogged up there in there, as in it's just not a perfect sheet. I know it's difficult, it's the way it's molded and all the rest of it, but again, the rear one is fine. So how comes you can do the rear one, but not these? But these are not exactly perfect on this. Okay, then we've got the arm glass on the front. That one's okay. No problem with that at all. So there we go. A new reboxing of a very, very good kit. Again, no problem with it. Nice to see it in the markings as well. Something just that little bit different doing it in the Spanish markings like that. As I say, gets it away from the sort of Luftwaffe, which don't get me wrong, I love them anyway, but it's nice to see it in different colors. You can do different weathering with it, stuff like that. It's a rebox. I know everybody's going to jump on it and all the rest of it. My problem to it is it's a rebox, but it's £10 more. So it's 10 quid more expensive than the Eddard Profi one. And in the Profi ones, you do get a lot more markings because we have to just point out, let me bring this camera out. As you can see down here on the Profi one, we've got all of these markings down here and everything else like that. Okay, so that is my only drawback to it, that they've got them, but they're extremely similar. It would be nice to see them as something else. Now this particular kit, to be honest, we're gonna review this in a couple of weeks. So I'll give you a break from 109s, but we will do it because this one is a new one out, okay, and all the rest of it. But when you look in it, and I haven't, as you can see, it is exactly the same as what we were just saying, okay? Apart from, obviously, we've got different canopies. This is a different version. And all the way in here, I'm just gonna have a look. But with the Eddard one, the Profi one, which don't forget is 10 pound cheaper, we get full color photo etch with the harnesses and all the bits and pieces down in there, okay? Which is a nice touch. We get a mask set, and then obviously we get all the decals. So you do have to ask yourself, really, you know, why you're paying 10 pound more for the same kit 
but you're going for those markings. So if you were doing it and you wanted those markings, obviously you can go for it because it's going to save you going down the aftermarket route. It's just that the Profi ones, the originals, come with more and they're cheaper. That's my thing to it. So there we go. That is AK's new line of interactives, uh, 109s and Spitfires. And I should think there'll be a lot more just like this coming. Thank <laughs> you.